Hello everybody, today I have the pleasure to propose to you this key 43 untitled Destiny versus Free Will. Well, like usually we're gonna, in four steps, we're gonna define what concretely destiny is. Secondly, what's the scope and the field of application. Third, we will see some uh, techniques and then we will finish by a few advices. Well, what is destiny concretely? Okay, this is, let's say, uh, defined as a um, predefined road for which we are just on. Okay, it's, uh, it's a track, it's a pathway which has been, in a certain extent, predetermined. Okay, so this is the basic convention that most of people think, okay? But what is interesting is to see the etymology of destiny. Destiny, in Latin, originally, it means literally determination. Determination. What does it mean? The determination means that there is a will, a real consciousness beyond of that. So, it means that if it has been predefined, there is a desire from something, some, someone, someone, and so on. So, there is actually, this is really interesting perception. Why? Because there is essentially two schools and for which we could, let's say, extend with a third one, which is a mix of both. The first one is the fact that everything has been pre determined, okay, predefined, and we are just passive, okay? So there is the passive way, there is the active way, and then there is a mix, okay? Or passive, active, and the middle way. The passive way, what is it concretely, okay? This philosophy think that whatever we do, we are just puppets, okay? In a certain extent, you know, the road is pre established and you only have to drive on these roads. It means that literally all the events happening in your life is already pre-established as a scenario of a movie for which you're not in a certain extent the actor but you are just the spectator despite the fact that you are uh, the main actor but you are just observing like if you had the illusion to be within a movie in 3D. But you have no interaction with the world in a certain extent. In this perception, to make it with another parallel, it would be, you know, like the kids in an amusement park, um, you know, they have uh, some uh, uh, merry-go-round, for instance. Okay, so there is, there are, let's say, rails, okay, rails like this. And they have a, um, a small car and they're very happy on this and so on. They are moving and advancing and so on, okay, driving. But this is a pure illusion because when they try to move, okay, the will, they cannot go from one side to another, okay. This, they are just following the flow and even the speed. They cannot uh, accelerate and so on. There is no gear. They have no impact at all. They just can have the illusion, okay, to play with that, but it's never move anything. They just can admire or enjoy the landscape, okay? So, in a certain extent, this is the first philosophy, which is a passivity in the destiny. It is established like this. There is a scenarist or not, but determination, I told you, means literally that there is a scenarist somewhere that we cannot see. We are just not the actor, but we are just the spectator within the movie, okay? So, this is the first philosophy. The second philosophy is the fact that um, there is uh, interaction, action and interaction, and we are actor and co-scenarists of the movie or the piece of theater we are playing in it, okay? Concretely, we act, I mean, we live according to our, the, the, the power of the mind, the quality of the thoughts, 
shaping the reality and also shaping through your actions, uh, impacting and having a behavior and so on. Okay, so concretely, this is a notion of, um, le let's say to take the, the, the example of uh, the merry-go-rounds, you have an impact on, um, you can steer, you can steer angle, okay, the, uh, the rails, okay, and if you do like this, you can change your pathway, you can be out of the tracks, okay, this is also possible, there is the roads of the motorway, and you have the right to go in the, in the river, to go in the mountain, to go in, in the jungle, and so on, it's really up to you. Okay, so this is the second, uh, let's say, the active uh, philosophy. And then when I say there is a mix, there is a mix which is, for which I like to define all exists already and all ready to exist. Okay, I play with the sound already and all ready. What does it mean? Everything exists already and all ready to exist. It is the notion of the multiverse, the parallel universe. What does it mean? It means that you have one universe here, there is one path, there is one way, and in parallel of that, you have a multitude, an infinite number of superposition of states, like other tracks, other roads, okay? superposed and not, super, uh, let's say, superimposed, okay, like this, and also in all directions, okay, that you cannot see, of course, because you have to fix on only one movie, only one, one road, okay, and actually this is depending also, uh, it is according to the quality of your mind and the frequencies of your, uh, the energy of your mind. Well, concretely, just for you to visualize a little bit. Then the ins and the outs, the scope, the fields of application. What for? What for being, I mean, the free will? What is the objective to be free in the destiny uh, instead of being just, uh, let's say, a slave of our destiny, of our, of our fate, okay? First is to to realize your dreams, you, to make your dreams come true, to uh, individually, collectively, for you, for your family, for your environment, your society, your, uh, your village, your, uh, your city, your community, whatever, okay, the scope. Then to reach your objectives for which you define, I mean, uh, uh, before, upstream, of course. Also, it allows you to improve life in general, the human conditions, your own one, but also for the society, some improvements, some problem solvings and so on, in different extents. And last, basically, to be happy individually, collectively, and also to be more, I mean, to be healthier. Okay, these are the main important points. Necessarily, for talking about destiny and free will, I have to talk about different aspects that we really define again. Um, law of attraction, co-creation, abundance, visualization, and conscious, conscience or consciousness, okay? This is important. So you can just pause the video and just for you to try to define what is law of attraction with your words, one sentence. Okay, so what's uh, law of attraction? Basically, it is just magnetism, okay? Magnets, okay? Magnets, you attract what you think, basically. Your mind, the, the thoughts are energies, okay? Your emotions are energies, okay? E, motion, E equal MC2, okay? The formula, Einstein formula for energy, E equal MC2, Emotion, the energy movements, these are emotions. We can feel when someone is down and so on, when we arrive in the, in the, in the meeting room and it's really, there is a density because everybody is fighting and you don't know anything about what's going on here. You can feel it, okay? There is energy, right? This is this, okay? So 
This is a uh, law of attraction is based on the Buddha philosophy, the Buddhism, but you can find an equivalence in most of the uh, different dogma, religion, culture, and so on. What you think, you become it. What you feel, you attract it. What you imagine, you create it. Okay, this is extremely important. And in parallel of that, more than to earth, the, let's say, the pillar of our modern society, Einstein, okay, Einstein in, in German means one stone. The stone, one stone of uh, the building of the new paradigm, the new consciousness, he say everything is energy, okay? Match the frequency of the reality that you want and you cannot stop getting it. It cannot be otherwise. It is not philosophy, this is science. The most important point is match the frequency of the reality that you want and you cannot stop getting it. It is not philosophy, this is science. Match the frequency of the reality that you want, I mean, uh, and you will get it in a certain extent. Okay, so it means that you are vibrating, okay, through your mindset positively to something and you cannot stop getting it. You get it. I mean, it's not you will get it, you get it. You get it instantly, okay? So, but for this, there is a work of co-creation, visualization. Co-creation, what is it? Why co-creation? Uh, the creator, when we say that, the creator with a capital letter is what? The living, the living one, the source, God, whatever, okay? But co-creation means that we co-create, we co-activate, we are co-scenarists. Let's say, when we say we, it means that this is our higher self, our consciousness, our higher self, and which is the, we express our inner divinity, okay, in co-optation, okay, in a coordination with the great all, the great wall, the great, I mean, God, let's say, and um, for which we are individually, I, uh, our higher self, higher self, is just the alveolus of the cosmic breath for which we are part of it. Okay, this is the principle of co-creation. The notion of abundance. Abundance, what's the definition of abundance? Concretely, it's with the contrary, it's easier. It is the fact not to miss. Okay, no lack of something. Okay, basically this is abundance. Then what is interesting is to define your needs. Do I really need that? Do I really need to have four cars? Do I really need to have the um, new smartphone uh, uh, version 15 doing a microwave and uh, you know what I mean? Do I really need that? Okay, this is the notion of where you put when you tune your notion of needs. Okay, as we say commonly, happiness is not to get what you want, but to be satisfied with what you have, okay? Personally, I consider myself as extremely rich, not for the accounts I have on my uh, the bank accounts, not for that. And the transmission and the heritage I can give to my offspring, what is it? Is the richness of the heart, is the education, is the values, and so on so far. And concretely, I feel, let's say, rich because um, life is amazing with me. And I try to be, to give back also, you know, like a retribution. But this is, I consider rich because my life is rich and is absolutely not. And probably that's my seller, I mean, what I earn is less than what I, what I had in the past. But I feel definitely more um, fitting with that. And once again, it's not uh, you're rich physically and you are necessarily unhappy and, uh, and the, on the con. It's not that. It's just the fact the richness is not qualitative, is not quantitative, is qualitative. Okay? This is important to define because it's personal definition. We will see one key, special, uh, I mean, just with a, f a focus point on money. Okay, so, but concretely, happiness is not to get what you have, but to, to be satisfied with what you have is really important. Also in the notion of sharing, okay, I'm rich of giving, for example, 
okay? And also because uh, for me, happiness is even more intense when it's shared. A bottle of champagne, I don't drink alcohol, but a bottle of champagne, do you drink by your own? The old bottle, most of the time we share, right? And it doesn't taste the same. It's the same principle. And also in this principle, the more you give, the more you receive. And I saw that intuitively, not necessarily by knowing it, but since I'm a kid, I give a lot. And also I'm rich in that sense. I receive a lot, a lot of helps and so on with people. And I give, and I'm not invested because for the return on the investment, of course not. But what I'm trying to say is that I do believe in that. I spend a lot of time to help for free, of course, as a volunteer, people, my students uh, here in the orphanage for charity and so on. But you cannot imagine how I get back directly and directly with a lesson of life, with many beautiful things, you know? And this is for me extremely important to perceive abundance like this as well. You know, the principle of alchemy, the alchemy in alchemy, it is said, if you seek, I mean, if you look for making gold, you will never succeed. And if you are able to make gold, you don't need any more, okay? What does it mean? It means that, and this is exactly what I try to transmit in the orphanage. I can give money to them, okay, fine. But what I try to transmit them is the capacity with the creativity and so on to find the treasure they have within themselves and thereby they will be always self-independent. This is exactly the transmission I give also to my offspring. The, 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 the amount of on my bank account, it can be a deflation tomorrow, a crack and so on. This is, let's say, uh, volatile. But the knowledge you give, the values you give to people and so on, the, the capacity to, let's say, to, to, to realize themselves and to be independent, this is the principle of my ethics, to help people to give keys to, for them to, to give birth to themselves because I'm convinced that everybody is um, holding a treasure within and this is important to find it. And once you find it, you are completely matching with, uh, let's say, existence in general, okay? So for me, it's really important to define and to clarify. And also in this notion of, um, um, you know, because um, you reduce your needs, because otherwise the modern society, especially Western one, is really a, like a bulimia of, bulimia of, you know, more and more, more of more, always more, and you never reach satiety. When you eat nobody, you're, you're full, that's fine, you're happy and so on. Do you really need to, uh, to finish like this and so on? It's not good for health, it's not really, uh, uh, you don't appreciate when it's like this. So why life should be like this, okay? And actually this is the notion to reduce also our needs because it's better also for the planet and so on and so forth. But just in the absolute, you know, it's Rabelais said science without conscious it is the reign of soul it is so true not only for science for life in general and in that sense it means that if you have this capacity of to access to abundance don't abuse about it that's the point <laughs> okay the subtle message the visualization basically to to resume there is three points visualize imagine seeing feeling in your heart and in your, in, your, in your senses, through your senses, and then to feel it as now, okay? So see, feel now, that's the point. This is the key, okay? Then consciousness. I need to talk about consciousness, conscious, okay? With a capital letter and a small c, okay? So the individual consciousness is the filter, okay? This is your mind connected so your ego your capacity to to analyze life according to the different filters that you have from education and so on blah 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 the ego shaped by society and so on as we saw uh, key nine uh, key uh, nine 
liberation of the ego, okay? And actually, this is the good connection with your higher self, which is the divine part, which is the link, the connection with the, the wellness and God, whatever you call it, okay? The living, in a certain extent. But concretely, uh, the consciousness, you, when you activate it, you feel, you understand, you understand, as I like to say, um, you feel that you are a part as a alveolus of the cosmic breath. You are a part of it, and as the great Sufi Rumi said, you are not a drop in the ocean, you are the entire ocean within a drop. And then there is a resonance, a ripple effects, butterfly effect, and also as above, so below, as below, so above, and so on. This is this notion of reciprocity. But concretely, the consciousness, individual consciousness, is just the filter uh, to avoid that, to, to have a deluge, you know, like a dam, okay? If you have the, the all water from the river, oh, I would like some water, okay, let's open up the gate completely of the, we put a bomb in a, in a dam and you receive all the water, you're overwhelmed and you die, okay? So, the fact to filter, okay, but let's open up just a little bit. You can, fill, you can just uh, um, serve just a, a glass, of, it's enough, you know. So it's the same principle we've, we saw in the key uh, 15. I invite you to watch it because it's more complex. Uh, space-time is linked also to consciousness, but space-time is unfolding in, in space over the time. Okay, concretely. And then it is also according to our, the filter of our consciousness. Okay, um, allowing to uh, unfold things otherwise as there is no uh, arrow of time, as Einstein men mentioned it. It's like if you were um, watching a movie, like poof, a block, one hour and a half or two hours, poof, one second. You don't understand anything, okay? There is no uh, uh, beginning, uh, 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 intrigue, and so on. <laughs> no, it's uh, all compact. So it would be, it would be absolutely uh, not understandable, and you could not live. And that's why I repeat myself: existence to exist, etymologically speaking, means to separate, separate from the unity the absolutes, the consciousness, you need to step back to extract, to overview also for that. So that's the point. Here we are, here we are regarding the notion of techniques and also the concepts. I say you need to, over, uh, to overview. It's extremely important, you know, life is like an amazing maze, okay? Binary speaking, it's like left, right, left, right. And each second, if you change one decision, you affect all your path, okay? It is the principle of a labyrinth, a maze, okay? But if you, the technique for the labyrinth, the maze, is to take, a, so to, to gain haith, okay? To have a big picture, overview of the, the different realities. And concretely, is exactly the metaphor of the medium, okay, uh, fortune tailor and so on, or the GPS. Uh, the ancestor of the GPS was an helicopter, um, able in 80s, uh, 70s, 80s, able to see, to predict according to the history, but also uh, the historic data, and also according to um, seeing the traffic uh, from a, a few kilometers. So it's what we call an extrapolation. Okay, the projection, a forecast according to what is now. Okay, um, so, but the fact to be, um, to have an overview allows you to have larger perspective, horizon. That's the principle. And uh, this is one of the very important aspects of, um, that's why lots of religion, um, let's say, um, advise not to, to see or to, to have, um, uh, access to fortune tailor. Why? Because if you're predicted, for example, one destiny and you believe in it, you co-activate it. Okay, so you become a slave of it. But if you don't know, 
Maybe you can co-create co co another one. I give you an example. If someone say to me, uh, oh, um, the girl you met is not your future wife, and you, 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 you are like uh, uh, really surprised because it's matching perfectly, you really want to do to create something, you are together for one year and so on, so on. You, you would like to build a family and so on. And as long as this moment someone say to you that, indirectly, for example, you have a good moment and you, you say to yourself, oh, it's so pity and so on. And maybe you will be more aggressive, you will be less involved with attention, with, uh, I don't know, uh, caress and so on and so forth. Because you, you would think, oh, yeah, but what does it mean? It means that she will uh, cheat on, uh, on me, she will leave me, she will, uh, and so on. So you're less, uh, you want to protect yourself and so on. So concretely, after maybe six months, one year, you will break up and you will say, ah, oh, she was right, the fortune teller. But actually, maybe you, you just conditionate your mind towards this option. Okay? This is co-realization, co-creation in the bad way. Okay? So that's why I invite you, if you really have a fortune teller, if you like what someone told you, and even if it's bullshit and it's absolutely not a medium, uh, no abilities, if you like this option, in that case, believe in it. If it's something you don't want, in that case, say this is bullshit and I'm gonna co-create it, okay? This is my just uh, kind advice. But concretely, more than to earth, I have four techniques for you. This is important, first of all, to avoid to be passive in our destiny is to establish a roadmap, okay? A roadmap, we are talking about uh, 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 traffic and so on. A roadmap, concretely, it is um, to have a kind of strategy. You know, Seneca, the Greek, the Greek philosopher, he said there is no favorable wind for those who don't know where they go, okay? It's like you, you want to play soccer, you ignore the rules, you don't know that you need to score, you know, in the, in the cage, in the adversary cages, okay? So, okay, after a while you just understand that you just have to kick, 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 okay? Is that, uh, and then you rush, you run like crazy and so on. What's the point to do that? If you don't know that you need to score, and not in yours, but in the adversary uh, cage, okay, goals, it's vain, it's useless. So it's the same principle. A lot of people are running, rushing, and so on, but they don't have defined objective, firstly. So objectives, okay, this is really important. Objectives, there is no, uh, let's say, uh, judgments, good, bad, uh, pss, not big deal. If your objective are yours, really what you have deep inside, that's fine, okay? This is not, uh, let's say, valuable and so on. It's individual, it's personal. Defining your objectives. Then the methodology, okay? How to reach that? What's the approach? What do you need? What's the skills, the competencies? Do you have them? No. Okay, in that case, what are the training, the tutor and so on? What's the, how to improve uh, your capacity and so on? Is it possible and so on, okay? so to see, to have the big picture of the all alternatives. Then, very important, is to have a deadline, um, a timeline and also a deadline, okay? You want, for instance, a transition of life or professional. You want to change, you don't like your job, you want to, to have another job that you define you like it, okay? How long do you need? You don't quit your job. Maybe you will need uh, some money, some salary just to handle properly the handover and the, the transition. So maybe you will just define you need one year or one year and a half, but at least through this deadline, you will be, you would be uh, motivated. This is important to have a deadline systematically. Okay, and a timeline splitting up uh, with a um, time frame actually uh, to have some uh, intermediaries objectives. Okay, and then to have some uh, maybe uh, plan B, plan C, backup in a certain extent, some different alternatives, because sometimes it's not happening exactly as you, you want it. But it's the same principle when you, have, um, you want to reach a point, uh, a city, okay, crossing a country or a department or a state. 
and uh, you plan to use, but there is a traffic jam, there is an accident, there is a crash and so on, and then you will use other alternative. And it's fine, as long as you reach it, that's fine. Okay, maybe you will take a little bit more time or you will accelerate and so on, you will have many opportunities. Though, uh, what is important is also to have a notion of corrective actions. That's to say, practically, okay, how to, it's, it's failed. Okay, fine. How to improve that? It is completely over, or I have another opportunity and so on. It's really to be practical, to be proactive in that sense. But it is important to do, to handle that. It can be with um, Word format, uh, Excel, whatever, or by, uh, on, on paper, but just it's clarified your objective and you have a clear mindset and that's important even when you talk to people oh i would like to i'm gonna change oh great what are you gonna do and then it shows a certain structure a certain framework and also you send a message to the universe and also in parallel to your unconsciousness okay uh, the fact that you parameter you reparameter and everything starts to be logical. And the more you repeat that, the more it's gonna be uh, a part of yourself and the more you're gonna vibrate it, okay? Very important tool. Second one is the visualization. This is a fresh reminder, it's so important that you catch it, you get it. This is concretely, I told you, it's you visualize whatever it is, it's for sport, for meeting, for an interview, a date, if you like someone, whatever, okay? You visualize a maximum of details, you see yourself and so on. You see the details and you repeat the scene many, 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 many times, not only one time, okay? And then you feel it in your heart, like, uh, I don't know, if um, you have a, a talk, a conference and so on, lecture, and you're a little bit shy and so on, and you just, you imagine the whole audience is completely uh, astonished, applauding and so on, and you, you really have the feeling that, yes, I did it, yes, I'm so proud, I'm so happy and so on. And you feel it like uh, you're almost crying because you're so emotive, you know, you're so sensitive, but you feel at the present time, this is the key factor of success. Visualization, uh, feeling, not only with your heart, also with your uh, five senses, okay? And at the present time, like, it's not, uh, and you thank for that, to be grateful that it is already there because you will launch, you will send some vibration of positiveness regarding your projects, your dream come true, okay? But the present time is extremely important to activate like this. You you send that to the universe. And that's why in the verse 106 in the Bible is, is this, when you will do the 2-1, okay, the 2-1 means that, it's not the shampoo conditioner, of course, it is the two, so mindset plus heart, emotions, okay, together combining plus the present time. You could do some miracles in a certain extent. Okay, and this is the same principle again and again, the Buddha, um, what you think you become it, what you uh, feel you attract it, what you imagine you create it, okay? And this is different ways to say, I mean, different ways, all the roads lead to Rome and to home. Once again, this is always the same principle. The notion of multiverse, okay, concretely, is activating the shift regarding the philosophy of Einstein, okay? Match the frequency of the reality that you want and you cannot stop getting it. It is not philosophy, this is science. Okay, you vibrate. You vibrate, your feelings are emotions, emotion. Okay, E equal MC2, which is literally the formula of energy. Emotion, the movement of the energy of your, um, your feelings, okay? So, concretely and you shift okay you vibrate positively and you shift in a parallel world it means that's parallel words multiverse means that you have this universe and you cannot so you are in a bubble but you cannot see other bubbles at the same time but probably that you coexist as a little you a mini me 
in all the scenarios, but your consciousness, your filter is only present at this, I mean, the only one time. Otherwise, it's like you watch, imagine 10 different movies at the same time, you don't understand anything. So, consciousness is one filter, it is one choice, this is one free will. Okay, it's like, you know, a la carte. You just choose with the remote control, you choose which program you want, which channel you want. It's the same principle. Channel one, there is one option of life, second one, and so on. Okay, and this is concretely um, the, the, the principle I explain in the, the, the key 16, uh, four, uh, 15 and 16, with space time, then the present, um, the, the power of the present, and then also in eight, key 18 with consciousness, and then also in the notion of parameter key 35 as well. I invite you to refer to it. But concretely, uh, to make it short, this is the notion of, you know, when you have different scenarios, okay, superposed, like uh, empiled, okay? So if we resume with five, only five scenarios, Let's imagine individually or collectively. Collectively. Let's imagine uh, the world is getting better and better. So they are independent. Uh, we can see this is a, um, a channel or this is a subway, uh, a line of subway here. Okay. So here is darkness. You cannot see. This is one timeline, a second one, and so on. They are independent. Okay. Here is a um, scenario for which everything is getting better and better. Uh, the awakening of uh, the consciousness on the planet, humanity and so on, everything is getting better and better. Um, and you have different scenario. Here is the extreme contrary. It's getting worse and worse. It becomes like a urban jungle, wars everywhere, the cataclysm and so on is a disaster. Okay, health, um, hell on earth. And here, different uh, alternatives, okay? Here, statu quo, same than now, but in, uh, in the future is with higher, uh, maybe, uh, temperature and so on, okay? You, individually, exist everywhere. I exist everywhere, okay? But my vibration is positive, so I choose. My free will is to go there, okay? In this scenario, and my consciousness is there. It means that if you are pessimistic and you meet me one day and you say, ah, oh, you see, finally what you say was just bullshit. And I will say, oh, you're right. I say wrong and I say bullshit. But actually, I don't mind. That's, this is for me, my mini me. Uh, I'm pacey for that. It's just a puppet. Me, I'm here. I mean, consciously I'm here, I'm everywhere, but my consciousness is there. So I don't mind about the rest, I don't see them. I only want to see one scenario. It's exactly what I try to explain with many different metaphors through my books. One of them is the entangled, uh, you know, cartoon, okay? Entangled cartoon, concretely, on a wall, um, this is um, not a draw, it is different draws entangled, interconnected, okay? So when you, this is like abstract, you don't see anything. But from the subway, with the activation of the, of the train, you can see a movement, okay? Like the principle of the cartoons, okay? And also because of the stroboscope, uh, tr stroboscopic dimension of your eyes. And you can see one scenario, line one, for example, uh, the cat is hunting um, the mouse. Uh, line two, uh, the, the cat is sleeping. So the mouse is uh, playing, uh, uh, dancing and so on. And another option, uh, uh, line three, uh, um, the, the mouse is eating the cat because uh, <laughs> the, the mouse ate too much uh, strange products. Okay? So, the spectators, the travelers, only see one scenario and they can reactivate 10 minutes later all the time. But actually, according to the tickets they bought, actually, according to the tickets they bought, is their choice, their free will, okay? Could be, uh, let's say, uh, comparable to a, a, a state of mind, a mindset, okay? 
and in a certain extent maybe they shift <laughs> to one scenario to another but having you if you arrive just freshly now here and I have the, the memories of my past I thought I think it's my life but who knows that we don't shift all the time at the same period who knows but anyway just keep in mind the most important principle is that according to your vibration and your definition of the good I mean the, the your objective and what you really truly want and so on poof, you can have access as long as you definitely are convinced of it this is important as well as a recommendation is to know the influences of the stars okay you're gonna tell me it's astrology kind of but is it the science um, you know the, the the heavenly bodies they have an impact on your mind uh, the proof is the moon the full moon there is uh, attraction and the pressure on the tide for example okay this is proof this scientifically uh, speaking proved uh, same on the mood we can see everywhere the crime rate is higher for this period of time okay the kids the, the babies the, some people feel it okay they don't sleep well and so on it affects the moon but other planets other stars as well impact us okay so that's the point to try to be more familiar with a current or another okay it doesn't mean that you're become uh, superstitious not at all because this is free will uh, you have the right to be superstitious or not and you can also co-create so if you are convinced that this is bullshit and you have another access is this is the free will okay but if I can afford um, some advice this is important first to define clearly your objectives individually collectively your environment and also for the society and to act in the reality not necessarily only in the dreams dreamer but also in parallel doers it's really important secondly to be peaceful to be peaceful and convinced that uh, you are co-creator okay on your potential to ask to your higher self to your guide the ancestor a god whatever but that you can ask and to repeat and to to thank for being there implying the notion of the visualization the techniques that we saw and last but not least it's very important also to work on the recognition with your intuition okay your higher self to be more to have more let's say of overview on the horizon of space-time and so on what is good for you uh, punctually and so on sometimes it just can fail for a good reason because it was not ready and you were not ready and so on and maybe it's just step step uh, let's say uh, backwards to have more capacity to jump uh, further later and so on okay so I invite you to think to meditate on all these elements okay and uh, actually as you know all the roads lead to Rome and to home. Thank you for your attention and see you very soon.